Welcome back. Working on the GTI again. But first, we gotta fix this. Doesn't work. My genie does not want to work. He's on vacation. Put it back, and now it doesn't work. <laughs> Everything's connected, right? I, I double checked everything and it did, it's not working. So, so what does one do? That's right. We get a new genie. Yeah, I had to go salt. Chlorine just went crazy this year. I usually use three buckets of chlorine, three inch tablets. Yay big. And, you know, per year, per year, per season. Uh, and they were like 85 bucks. They're like 250, dollars $250. So I'm like, I'm done with chlorine. So salting the pool. Yeah, salt. Pool salt. All right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and put the GTI inside the garage and get to it because I had to, I've, I've got distracted today. Today I had to replace the, the, what do you call it? The garage opener, the new one, with the new one. And I had to do this, actually install that. The, the uh, chlorinator, uh, salt chlorinator, and add salt, and I'm, I'm done. I'm gonna go work on the GTI now. Because I have all my parts, except for the exhaust hangers. Damn it. We are installing our front motor mount. This usually is hydraulic. They, uh, it's standard, almost standard on all Golfs, including GTIs. But this one's solid rubber. No hydraulics on this one because it is not recommended at the uh, VW Vortex uh, forums. They say, don't do it. Just go solid rubber. There's no difference in vibration. So we're going to go down here and loosen that nut right here. That one. And then there's two on the bottom. Here and there. And that's it. And then we'll raise the engine up. We might have to disconnect our motor mount over here. But I don't know how that's going to go. Okay, just to clarify, I do have the Bentley manual, okay? And this is for 85 all the way up to 92 uh, gasoline, diesel, turbo, diesel, including 16 valve, Golfs, and GLIs. Uh, I do have this, and this thing is like, oh my goodness gracious. There's a lot of notes everywhere where I've, you know, been making notes on it. Anyways, this is what I learned on uh i don't usually use it anymore because i know this book it's in my head so okay she's really stuck uh, so we had to get the big boy uh it's it's probably rusted on there we got some penetrating oil but let's see what happens ah. oh there you go she's out the nut is out and it broke my thing Check it out! <laughs> it broke it! Okay, so we have to remove this one and this one. This is a 17 millimeter, this is a 30, uh, 13 millimeter. Uh, so we're gonna do that one first, see if we can get to it. There it goes. Alright, we're doing the 13 millimeter. Okay, that pretty much finishes off all our uh, connections, uh, bolt connections to the motor and the frame. So we're going to go ahead and uh, lift the transmission up so we can get this out of the way and we can install our new one. Okay, ah, maybe it'll do it. Let me see now. There we go. She's up. Go this way. Okay, this is interesting. They're not the same. Look at how long this is right here. You know, it's about maybe about a finger. Look at this one. It's a little wider. This one's about an, mm, about an inch. That one's about three quarters of an inch. Huh. And the angle right here is also different. This to this is different. But maybe it doesn't really matter. Um, but here's the problem, see? This one blew up. 
If I flip it over, oil will come out of there. Black oil. Um, this one's solid rubber. Like I said, there is no oil in here. There's not hydraulic, so. I'm going to go ahead and try to put it on. If it gives me grief, then you'll find out in the next couple of seconds. So I'm going to have to guide this thing in to the hole so that it goes in. Lower it ever so slowly. And I have Twinkie wanting to help. There we go. All the way. It's coming down. All the way. All the way. Let it drop. Okay. So I guess it didn't matter the angle, that angle thing. Um, so that is pretty much it. I'm going to go ahead and tighten those two uh, bolts and put the nut on the top and that's it. We're done. Okay, so um, I'm tying that one up. Um, I'm actually, I, I did actually use anti-seize on that one because I don't want that one to ever seize up in case I ever need to change it. Or drop the motor or what for whatever reason so I went ahead and did that and I'm using the, all these ridiculous extensions just because I, I can't get the air tool in here and I don't want to damage this anything right here or scratch it so it's actually painted nicely painted okay it's just dusty <laughs> so I already tightened the two bottom ones and I also did add uh, anti-seize on those because I, I just you know what I'm saying they were kind of rusty the the, the bolts were kind of rusty so i said you know what i'm gonna get some anti-seize on these things and uh i'm glad i did so i'm gonna time that and i'm pretty much done with the motor mount okay you know what because i didn't show you that well when i showed you that this thing was busted okay so when i would shift gears like bah! every time i would shift gear i would hear a, a loud bang like bang okay this is this was it bang 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 every time it shift gears Okay, this was it, okay? Okay, so I just made a discovery, and the discovery is this. Good news is that it's got fairly new rubber thing. It does have a little nick right here. It looks like the rim probably rubbed on it, but it's so tiny that it's insignificant. Um, this hose is not cracking. I figured it would be by 33 years from, you know, 33 years. They should be cracking because I know the back ones are. Uh, but these are from a VR6, okay, VR6. The VR6 has this connection right here, like that, okay, that it, then it has a little bolt that bolts onto the massive, massive caliper from a VR6, okay. This is why this thing stops on a dime, okay, I, I, I didn't know I had VR6 brakes on the front. Well, it kind of makes sense because I have VR6 rotors, from a 96 so this is probably from a 96 um yeah this thing doesn't have this provision right here so that i could just bolt it on to the uh caliper these is for a standard 89 gti and these are vr6 minimum probably from 1996 these calipers and this is a 89 so that is uh, seven years? Yeah, seven years difference. Okay, so good news is I don't have to change these. So we're good. I'm gonna go for the back now. And wouldn't you know it, ran out of time. I gotta go to sleep. It's like really late at night and uh, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna get a uh, text from the wife saying, hey, I'm gonna sleep. So. <laughs> I'm gonna go wrap it up. Okay, front suspension, everything's perfect. So we're just gonna replace those little tiny hoses on the back, the three one, uh, three of them. Uh, that'll be tomorrow. Um, I ran out of time, like I said, because of the genie going AWOL. So I had to get a new genie, so I have three wishes, right? Three wishes, yay! So, <laughs> oh yeah, and then the pool, the pool. I went from uh, chlorinating tablets to salt, salt, salt pools. Salt pool. Salt pool. Can't, that doesn't sound right. Salt. Salt. Salt pool. Pool salt. Salt pool. <sighs> Sorry about that. Ah, yes. New day. Just mowed the lawn. She looks beautiful now. Put the lawnmower away and uh, let's get that thing in here. Okay, she's up. I'm going to go ahead and remove the wheels and uh, let's get dirty. <laughs> Yeah. 
Yeah, um, this thing has aftermarket uh, coilovers. Uh, they're adjustable. I'm, I'm going to leave them the way they are. I actually like the stands that it has right now, so I'm not going to mess with them. We're going to replace these, and we're just going to take the calipers off. We're going to replace this hose right here. This hose, this is rotted. This is rotted. And so is the other one. And so is the one that's it's in the middle of the subframe, you know. Okay, it's, it's rotted. We have to replace those. So we're going to replace our rotors. I'm going to go ahead and paint my new rotors black from here because I got the black theme going, you know. Black trim, black thing, black thing on the bottom. The rims are dark, you know. They're actually they're like like silver gray, dark smoke gray, something like that. Anyways, so when the sun hits it, they get really bright, but they're actually dark. And it just kind of goes with the theme. So I'm going to go ahead and paint this black and this edge. So I'm going to go ahead and paint it black also so that it matches the whole theme. But first, I'm going to go ahead and prep those discs because I need to put the, uh, the the new bearings in there. So I have to press in the what you call it. The races, the races that goes on the inner and the outer before you put the bearings in. And then I'm going to pack those things with grease. And that's going to be fun. A messy, fun job. So, here's my bearings. Oops, I almost threw that away. These are the races we're going to press into the discs. And uh, you can use a big socket and then just whack it with a big hammer. Or, in my case, a small sledgehammer. But basically, yeah, these two. This is the outer. This is the inner. Yeah, check it out. I found the socket that I'm going to be using. Check it out. This one goes all the way in. All the way down. Without, you know, no problem. It's exactly what I need to pound that thing in there. Like, yay. And then, that is actually, I'm using, just so you guys know, if you guys need, you know, if you guys have a socket that's 1 in 7 sixteenths, you know. Okay, that's the socket for the rear. And the front socket is actually going to be, well, actually, what's a 30 millimeter? Yeah, 30 millimeter. Goes all the way in. See? Perfect for this one. To pound it in. See? Okay. Those are the sockets I'm using. This is my big hammer, or uh, sledgehammer. It's a little tiny one. So, I'm just very carefully... Placing that thing like yay, we're gonna go ahead and hammer it in. You can use a press. I have a press, but I'm doing this because I 90% of people don't have a press. When it hits the bottom, the noise is gonna go from tong 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 to tong. It's gonna change. The sound is gonna change. That's why you, that way you know when you've bottomed out. We're in. The socket is in. See how it sounded? It completely changed. The sound just changed. So this one's already all the way in. So now we're going to flip it over. And we're going to do the other one. Make sure you don't put this upside down. Because then... <laughs> oh my goodness gracious. I would be crying if that ever happened to me. Exact same procedure. Try to hit it as square as you can. The socket is in. See how it's changed? The, the sound just changed. So, she's all the way in. Our races are in. We're good. I'm going to do the other one, and uh, I'll bring you back when I'm painting. All right. She's all painted on the other side and this side. I wanted to get this side because I don't want this thing to rust. You know, not that anybody's going to see that, but... <laughs> Second rotor. And now we're at the new bearing stage. we got to pack these with grease. Uh, these have zero grease. This is clean. I'm going to go ahead and just grab a huge goop of this and just go inside. Throw it in. Way in. It's kind of messy. Okay. That's good enough. I'm going to grab another 
thing like that. And this, we're gonna, we're gonna do this. Uh, that should be in my, let me see if I can do this. Right there. That's better. And I'm just gonna do this. And that's gonna force the grease upwards to the other side. Like that. See that? See how the grease is coming out right there? Uh, yeah, you can see that. Okay, that's exactly what you want to do to all of it, 360 degrees. So you just go like this. Yep, came through, moving on, turning it. Yep, it's coming through. This is sticky grease because it's Lucas, okay? This is really good for like if you're hot rotting it and you're hauling ass on the freeway and shit like that or on the track. This grease will stay on the bearing, okay? You're never going to run these dry with no grease and have a premature failure. It's just not going to happen. Not with this kind of grease. Okay. Okay, looks like I've got... I've got 360 degrees grease coming out through this side. So I'm just gonna do this. Get some more on there. Make it look nice and sloppy. And uh, throw it in, way in. Oh my God, look at my hands. Now I don't, I got a little pinky. I can grab and let me clean this out. Okay, like so. Just trying to keep it as neat as I can. Otherwise, it's going to start oozing its way around and making a uh, ugly mess. I'm going to have to decontaminate my rotor because I just touched it. Damn it. <laughs> That's exactly what I didn't want to do. So I'm going to grab my mallet. Oh, I'm going to have to decontaminate my hammer now. Oh, I'm going to have to decontaminate my mallet. Yeah. She's done. This side is done. I'm going to do the exact same thing to the others. I'm not going to show you any more packing uh, the bearings with grease because it's just repeat and you know, repeat and repeat. So we're done with this part. Okay, let's remove the bolts for the caliper. I already removed the bottom one. So, okay, okay, this, oh, forgot, I need to release the brakes, okay, should be able to get it out, oh, that hit my funny bone, ah, so it's out, I'm going to move it over to the side, on this one, it has the cable, it's got this cable, uh, that, that's the handbrake, and it takes all the weight. So, you know, you're not going to damage your, uh, your hose or anything like that. Uh, that's one of the positive things about um, GTIs. Anyways, um, that is off. I have to take this bracket off so I can take the rotor off. Okay, Ellen wrench thing is in. See if it'll come loose. There we go. There we go. She's out. Bring that over. This thing out. Okay. Okay, removing the cover. Just <sighs> kick your ass. I gotta clean this because I can't see the pin. Okay, I've already straightened the cotter pin. It just took takes forever because I didn't want to film that. So it's just it is what it is. You're gonna have to play with it yourself. I go through the through the nose or the needle nose of the cotter pin. And I just whack it until I get it out. We have new cotter pins that came with the kit, so we're not going to reuse this. Um, yeah, take the crown off. That's the locking crown, and it should simple, simple, simple stuff. Um, to remove this, all you have to do is just just hit the side of the rotor. 
just hit it, boom, and it'll fall right out, but you have to catch it. So I'm gonna hit it with my other hand over here, and then this thing is just gonna go. Sometimes it falls right out, it'll go boop, and it'll fall down. And if you, you're in an area where there's dirt, it's gonna land in the dirt. And now, grab your rotor, and out it comes. Now, I'm not gonna clean any of that because that, that is brand new grease. So, you know, why? Why would you do that, right? Right. So, if you saw my videos, like three or four videos back, you saw me grease that. So, it's the same kind of grease. Same kind of grease as this. Okay. Same thing. So, we're going to put it on. Okay. It is in. Let me get the other bearing and crap hardware. Okay, you don't have to do this. This is overkill. I just want a lot of grease behind it, behind the bearing. Okay, I'm just throw in a huge goop of it in there. Okay, that's just me. This is this is more than enough probably. But I, I just want to be extra sure that I'm going to be able to haul ass. Now we're going to grab that bearing. I'm sorry, that nut because the kit doesn't come with the new nut. So we're going to install the nut. We're going to snug it. We're going to go through the tightening procedure again. Okay, so you go like this, you grab your nut. <laughs> Let me shut up. And you basically tighten it. Okay, now it's tightening up. Okay, now I can feel it. Okay, that is tight. Like right there is is loose. Right there is tight. See how much it, that was? That's not that much, okay? Um, and spin it. Very difficult to spin. Okay. Very difficult. Okay, now we're going to back it up. Ah. It's still too tight right there. Just backing it up. That That is way too loose now. There is no... No load. That's the word I was looking for. Load. We need to put a load on it. Okay, right there. This is where load begins, right there. So we're just going to go like that. Confirm. And leave it. Okay, we're leaving it. We're going to put the crown back on. New crown. Okay, let me see if that's going to work. Yeah, that's probably going to work. New cotter pin. Now, you know what? This crown is not long enough. I just noticed it. Okay. So, what's happening is this crown, these things are not tall enough. So, the hole is like way up here. See? It's not going to do anything. So, I'm going to use my old crown. That's why you never throw anything away. Okay. I'll put this back on. Let's see. Let's see if that works. This is this one does work. Yeah, 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 yeah. See? These aftermarket parts, man. I'm telling you, they're flaky. Flaky, flaky, flaky. I ended up using my old one because these things are too low. And this is just right. That, that one actually caught it. Okay, okay. I'm going to go ahead and bend these. You don't need to see that. And we just put the... Cap on. Would you look at that? This cap is too big. It will not go into the. Oh my god. Is it really that bad? Are they really that bad? Let me see this one. Yeah, this one will go in. See, it even stays there. All right. Let me get my mallet. There we go. She is done. Okay, bracket is in. Tightening up the Allen bolts that go on the back. There we go. Okay, that one's tight. I'm gonna do the bottom one, and uh, we need to compress that thing so we can get the brakes on there, because uh, it ain't gonna fit. Okay, just so you get an idea on my hack that I'm doing right here, I'm using a wood clamp. 
using this wood clamp to put on my ratchet, which has an Allen wrench that's 12 millimeter that goes to the center of that right there. Let's see if I can get more light in there. Yeah, goes to the center of the calip or the uh, piston. Okay, see how it's hooked up to the back. And so right now this is really tight, and basically I'm just gonna wrench this to you know righty tighty lefty loosey right so i'm gonna wrench this downwards and the caliper starts it's gonna start to collapse inward the piston is gonna start collapsing okay. fortunately there is no room in here to really you know do any justice but basically that's the way it is right there okay and i'm just gonna back it off over here you're gonna watch me wrench this back and forth until it's fully collapsed so we can put the new uh, pads on there. Okay, it's loosening. So I got to tighten this up a little bit more. And then... It's collapsing inwards. I can see it. Tighten it more. Okay, it's collapsing even more. Tighten it more. It's done. Okay, she's done. Completely down. Um, take this off. Take that off. She's all the way in. I need to whack them so they sit all the way down. Okay, so caliper goes right in. Press those in, like yay. They're hitting the, unfortunately I kinda need both hands. Oh, there we go. Ha! So I'm gonna put the, I need to lower it a little bit more. Nut there, nut here, and I'm done. Okay, I've got the bolt that goes here, bolt that goes there, they're nice and tight. Um, there you go, see? Perfect, okay. We're going to do the same thing to the other side. I'm going to replace that little hose. I'm going to replace this hose on that side also. And I'm going to replace the one in the center of the beam. Actually, it's actually towards the driver's side. Okay, so I'm in the driver's side. Rotor, the new rotor is on. Caliper, new brakes, everything is on. Um, I'm just going to remove this hose because it's nasty. It takes an 11 on, on one side and it takes a 14. Try to use high quality um, tools on this because if you get the cheaper ones, they tend to round out the 11 millimeter and then you're going to be crying trying to take that off. You probably got, well, I mean, you probably could. It's going to be rounded out and you're going to have to use like vice grips or something to get it to come off. Okay, she's going to start leaking. She's leaking. I got oil on me. Let's see if I can take this off over here. And I hit my hand really hard. Oh my god, that hurt. Okay. This one is like cracked and you wouldn't believe how bad it is. I mean, this is horrible. Horrible. It's coming off. Okay. She's off. Let's see what I'm doing. Okay, here we go. Drip, 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 drip. Yeah, it's easier to do if the caliper is not here. The caliper is in the way. So I hit myself really hard. I actually felt that really, really bad. Okay. She's good and tight. I'm going to feed it back through the hole. Now, the little clipper thing that secures this from uh, moving in this little loop hole, the little loopery thingy, I don't know what happened to it. It didn't have it when we bought the subframe because this came with the subframe okay all of this because oh for those of you who don't know this car was involved in an accident and in that accident they uh basically the subframe was all bent it's garbage so i had to we had to put a newer newer subframe in there here because that's all we could that's all we had i'm not getting the threads i'm not hitting the threads the way i should so that it, it threads in. She is good and tight. 
I, I need to get the little thing that goes right here to secure this properly, but mechanically speaking, I don't think it's going to do anything, seriously. Um, just get tight up there. Okay, this thing is ready to go. We're going to bleed them, and uh, that's going to be the fun part. I need uh, somebody in the car to do this. Yes, I do have that uh, bleeder thing that's over there, but they don't work. They, they, they don't work. So it's better to just do it the two people thing. You know, have somebody press on the pedal and then you just open the valve right here and let the air out till you see uh, no bubbles coming out and you're done. And that's the best way. Okay, so we're back to the passenger side, the one we did first. Um, so I'm curious on something. How many of you actually caught the mistake that I made here? I made a mistake. So now, what mistake did I make? The answer is, I didn't put the locking washer that goes right after the bearing. Then the nut. And then the locking nut. Remember I said the crown was too low? And the cotter pin wasn't grabbing the crown? That was a big mistake. On my part. Why? Because I wasn't paying attention because I was tired. And when you're filming, you just, ah, you know, whatever. Yeah, blame it on the filming. Yeah, whatever, dude. Okay, so how many of you caught that, huh? How many of you caught that? All right. Everything's done. Let me bleed the car. We're done. We are done. Um, yeah, we're done. We're uh, going to put the wheels back on. Uh, we got the new hoses in. We got the one in the center uh, replaced. Um, we did this correctly. So, um, I hope you pass the test. <laughs> I'm going to call it that, a test, right? <laughs> Anyways, and uh, yeah, that one's done, new new hoses. And uh, yeah, she's done. I mean, she's beautiful. Um, make sure you guys check your reservoir when you're bleeding. Don't run it dry or you're just going to be doing it all over again. Oh, that ain't no fun. That is no fun. Okay, I'm gonna have to cut it short right here because this video is too freaking long because I make too freaking long videos. But see, I like to show you the trouble that people go through and versus what people show, you know, they're like working on something and they cut it. They don't show you actually removing it or something like that, you know. I try to show you, although I still do that, but, uh, you know, um, uh, you know, just to give you a rough idea on how things are done. Yes, even professionals screw up. I am not a professional. Okay. I'm not a professional. So, I screwed up. But I caught it. I caught it. I, and, I, and I went back. And I actually showed you guys because, um, you know, I want to show, I, you know, transparency. I don't want to, you know, show you, like, do it over again the right way, whatever. No, 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 no. I screw up too, man. Anyways, everything's fixed in the back. I like it, and uh, I'm just going to call it a day because, like I said, this video is too long. I'm going to try to edit it as much as I can, make it shorter, because I'm thinking a lot of guys don't like, and girls don't like, uh, long videos. They want to see, they, they want videos somewhere between 15 and 20 minutes. And I, I really can't, I can't show much in that kind of time frame. Um, anyways. But that's just me. Maybe I'm doing everything wrong. All right. Adios, muchachos. Adios, muchachas. No bang. No bang. There's a lot of wind. And it's actually pushing me to the side. Okay, whatever. Well, let's see right here what happens when we turn around and haul ass. Going around. I'm gonna haul ass. I missed the gear. Okay, there we go. Try again. Okay, no bang. All right. I shift from uh, second to third. And uh, yeah, but I missed the gear. I'm not used to this car. Um, I think I'm gonna put those little uh, uh, plastic spacers that go in the transmission uh, Previous video if you didn't see it. Yeah previous video, but um, 
it's a lot quieter for sure. Yeah, drop the gear and because uh, I want to see if it made the bang. It didn't. No bang. No bang. Wow, it's a different beast. Completely different beast. Oh yeah, tires will break loose for sure if I if I floor it. 